Welcome to the Missouri Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, before we get started with our presentations, just a few quick housekeeping items to go over. Uh, the first is that attendees are welcome and encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. You can pose your question to a specific presenter or you can ask a general question to any and all of the presenters. Also, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And there are two other blocks of sessions this evening, so please do feel free to sign up for those if you haven't already done so. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first panelist, which will be Loyola University Chicago. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Eve Hoffman. I'm an undergraduate admission counselor at Loyola University Chicago, as you said. Um, I work with students from Missouri and Kansas. So um, if you are a resident of either of those states, you're with me. Um, I will be hopefully visiting uh, St. Louis and Kansas City moving forward through this summer and fall. So keep an eye out, feel free to connect with me moving forward. I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of Loyola Chicago, um, and then I'll pass it off to Augustana afterwards. Okay, so um, if you're looking at Loyola from a broad perspective, just a bird's eye view, we have um, about 12,000 undergraduate students. So it is a mid-sized institution, um, students hailing from all 50 states and currently 82 countries across the globe. In terms of student diversity right now, about 41% of our students come from a culturally diverse, meaning non-white background. Um, that includes both international and domestic students. Um, and then in terms of our faith background, about 61% of our student body identifies as Roman Catholic, at least on their applications to Loyola. We don't keep track of whether students practice any faith on campus um, or anywhere else. Um, the other 40% of our students come from other faith backgrounds, which can mean other Protestant or Orthodox Christian denominations, you know, other major world faiths, minor world faiths, and um, atheists and agnostic and non-religious students. We share that stat about um, religion on campus because Loyola is a Jesuit Catholic school, which means that we are a specific kind of Catholic institution, um, one that is founded by the Jesuit priests, uh, which are a group that have been around since the 16th century, um, founded by St. Ignatius of Loyola, hence where we get our name. Um, Jesuit schools do not require that you practice any faith in particular, let alone Catholicism. If you are practicing something, we are happy to provide services for that. But really what a Jesuit school is at its core is an institution that seeks to produce men and women for others. Um, so they are very service oriented institutions uh, focused in social justice, community wellness, um, global awareness and um, this Latin phrase that you can see here, cura personalis, which means care for the whole person. Um, so as an institution in terms of our like pillars as, as you might call them, our values, um, the way that I always describe Loyola is a school that focuses on social justice and commitment to community um, and a school that focuses on kind of a Renaissance style of learning, sort of that liberal arts approach to a curriculum. So you have your major, majors plural perhaps, minor, minors plural, um, and a core curriculum, a set of liberal arts courses that you're required to take during your undergraduate experience to make you a well-rounded adult and citizen of the world. Loyola has two campuses that are located in the city of Chicago that service our undergraduate students. The first and the main one is our Lakeshore campus, which is up on the north side of the city in a neighborhood called Rogers Park. It's actually the northeastmost neighborhood of Chicago. So it is an urban campus, but it doesn't have a traditionally urban feel to it. It's a very residential college community. Um, so for a lot of students, it kind of offers the best of both worlds. You've got that residence hall right next to the academic quad and basketball courts and study spaces and dining halls. Uh, but you can hop on a train or a bus to get access to a more traditionally urban cultural experience and go to shows and sporting events, um, festivals and you know, cultural activities throughout the city. We also have a smaller campus that is located downtown right off of Michigan Avenue 
in the River North Gold Coast area of Chicago. So for those of you that have visited kind of that shopping district of the city, and this is where we have classes for our School of Business, our School of Communication, and our School of Social Work. So basically all students at Loyola that are undergraduates will spend time at the Lakeshore campus. Um, all of our freshman halls are there. Most of our upperclassmen residence halls are there as well. Um, but students that are in business, communications, and social work will spend a little bit of academic time down at this Water Tower campus taking courses in those studies. Um, we do have a shuttle that runs back and forth between the two campuses, which is usable not just by students in those majors, but by everyone that wants to have a quick, easy access to the downtown. Um, I also just want to encourage you to glo go global. Wow, I can't talk today. <laughs> go global while you are a college student um, and get outside of Chicago and the US if you have the chance to. Um, every undergraduate student has the ability to do a study abroad experience at Loyola. Most students have the ability to do a full semester abroad. So I encourage you to think about that. We also have some shorter term programs too. But because of that Jesuit commitment to global awareness and servicing community, we did want to create some spaces that are ours, that are quintessentially Loyola in other countries. So we actually do have two campuses abroad. The first is in Rome, Italy. That is our most popular campus. It's called the John Felice Rome Center. And we also have a campus in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam in Southeast Asia. Um, you're not limited to those two spaces by any means. We've got programs in 70 countries. Um, so we will find something that floats your boat, but just an FYI, I want to kind of plant that seed in your head right now um, to have you consider studying abroad during your college experience. Last piece of the puzzle that I wanted to talk about today is our freshman application process. If you are currently a junior in high school and are considering applying to Loyola next year, um, just a heads up, it's a pretty easy you know, step-by-step -step sort of approach. Um, the first thing that you have to do at some point, hopefully in August, but at the very latest, December 1st, is submit your online application. It's free online. There's no extra fees whatsoever. It's just filling out a form with your biographical info. You can do that either through our website, the Common App, or the Coalition App. We don't prefer one or the other, just choose whichever is easiest for you. Um, again, complete that no later than December 1st, and then go talk to your high school about sending in a letter of recommendation and a transcript. Those are the only two things that you need to send in to be reviewed for admission and for scholarships from Loyola. We are a test optional school. We do consider test scores, ACT scores and SAT scores if you share them with us. But if you do not share them with us, you are still going to be reviewed for admission and for all scholarships. Um, I've reached my time threshold, so I will stop here, um, but please feel free to send questions along to me um, in the Q&A. Thank you very much, Loyola. Um, and up next is Augustana College. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Rowell, and I want to get my uh, screen shared with you guys. Yes, so uh, Augustana College, um, we are located in Rock Island, Illinois. Um, we have approximately 2,500 students at Augustana, actually it's about 2,600 at this point in time. Uh, we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio uh, at Augustana. Um, we have approximately um, 18 students on average uh, in our classes. So that's uh, typically much smaller than what you would find in your normal um, you know, high schools. Uh, here in America. Uh, we have over 90 majors and uh, we have over 150 clubs uh, and organizations at Augustana. Um, we have Greek life, we have student government, we have um, you know, Habitat for Humanity, we got a Quidditch team if you're a Harry Potter fan. We have a ton of things here. Eric, just a quick note to say your screen isn't sharing. Okay, hold on, let me try it again there. Okay. Okay, there we are. Um, and uh, again, so just so you can remember the, the numbers and everything at 2,500 students, uh, 90 majors, 11 to one uh, student to faculty ratio, um, you know, average class size would be about uh, you know, 18 students and 150 different clubs. Um, we are in the Quad Cities, which is located about three hours uh, east, um, I'm sorry, west of Chicago. Uh, we are just about straight north of St. Louis, uh, about four hours, and um, there's about 400,000 people in the area. Uh, great location, um, and we are dead center of all the major cities in the Midwest when it comes down to different opportunities for uh, internships or careers. You don't have to go too far uh, from us or perhaps from home. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is very important to us, 
at Augustana. I am an alum of this wonderful institution. And when I was a student back in the early 90s, um, we did not have nearly as much diversity as we do now. At that time, it was probably five to seven percent. But now we're about 37 percent when it comes down to students of color, which includes international students as well. So we're quite proud of being able to provide that classroom where you get to learn from each other, um, as well as learning the subject matter. Um, our students are very involved at Augustana. About a third of our students are varsity athletes within the NCAA Division Three. About a quarter of all of our students are uh, um, they're artists. They participate in music, art, theater, dance. Again, uh, we have an awful lot of clubs and activities at Augustana College. Um, one thing we take great pride with is that we have the quintessential student athlete in the sense that um, we are top 10 in academic All-Americans. These are the students that do well in the classroom and on the field or court. And uh, the schools that you know, are ahead of us are schools like MIT, Nebraska, Stanford, and Notre Dame. So again, that's something that we take great pride with. Um, we are really focused on helping students find um, their calling at Augustana when it comes down to potential careers they will be interested in, uh, internship opportunities, um, service opportunities. There's so much that our students can engage in um, at Augustana that we really wanna help um, them sort of figure out when it comes down to what their future will be after they leave Augustana. Um, the majority of our students, 89% of our students will either study abroad, have an internship or do research. 55% um, of our students will leave um, the country for an international experience. And we have a 98% job placement rate, which means about six months after you graduate from Augustana, you should be um, in graduate school or working and beginning your career. We have a program called Augie Choice. It's a $2,000 stipend. Um, that all of our students will receive and you can use that money for study abroad internships or research and actually most of our students do all three so your resume can be quite shiny coming from a place like augustana because of so many activities that you would be able to participate in um, we have uh, merit-based scholarships at augustana that range from 24 to 28 thousand um, dollars each year um, you earn them you don't apply for them so as I review your application um, at Augustana, um, I can determine what scholarship that you would get based purely on what your academic um, experience has been. Uh, we are test optional as well. Um, so if, you don't, uh, if you're not too happy with your ACT or SAT score, you don't have to submit it. Um, but if you are happy with it, go ahead and submit it as we try to find out as much as we can about your, um, your academic prowess to make sure that we are good fits for one another. Um, I wanna add a few more things before I conclude. Um, we are ranked in the top 100 of all small private liberal arts, uh, liberal arts uh, uh, colleges in America. And uh, our top majors include business administration, uh, psychology, um, biology, pre-med, and accounting. Thank you guys. And if you have any questions, by all means, please put them in the chat box. Thank you very much, Augustana. Um, up next this evening is St. Louis Community College. Good evening, good evening. One second. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. All right, my name is Markel uh, Robinson. I'm with St. Louis Community College and also have Miss uh, Mindy Sabanale, um, which uh, will be uh, watching the chat. Should you have any questions about um, anything I do cover? So St. Louis Community College, um, we're located um, in St. Louis. We are um, the um, um, largest um, college in, uh, in the Missouri area. We have four main campuses. Uh, well, I'll get to our average class size is 23 um, students. Um, so that you have 19 to one um, is what you're gonna get um, um, as far as like student to teacher ratio. Like I said, we have four main campuses. We do have uh, the Flores and Valley campus, the Forest Park, the Merrimack of the Wildwood. We offer two educational centers, which is the uh, South County campus on William J. Harrison Center. And then we offer two workforce uh, centers, the Corporate College and the Center for Workforce Innovation. So you can see that we are located all over the metropolitan area of uh, St. Louis. So we do have a location, um, no matter what uh, part of St. Louis that you do live in, we do have a location that's closest to you. 
Okay, so we have uh, three different options at Sims Community College, so consider the opportunities. So um, the first are going to be our transfer option. So for students that are looking to come get their associate's degree um, and transfer to a four institution, um, this will be more the slide that um, kind of fits you the most. Uh, our most popular degree program is going to be our general transfer studies degree in the 60 degree program. Uh, most any student that is doing our um, applied sciences programs, if you don't know uh, what you want to major in, if we offer programs, if, if you're looking for a program we do not offer, um, you will follow to the general transfer studies uh, degree program. We do have articulations agreement with every school in the state of Missouri, public uh, for institution state of Missouri, sorry, um, that states that if uh, classes that you take, if you see that MOTR right there, um, when you look at the class schedule, that is 100% to uh, transfer to any four year public institution. And when it comes to private institutions in Missouri, um, some of them will transfer, but we do always ask that you contact um, the college um, that you're transferring to um, just to verify that, you know, the class that you're taking will transfer, as well as um, um, schools out of state um, follow the same format that we do strongly encourage you to um, just to get that um, confirmation that the class that you will be taking will be transferring. And so our next is going to be our career technical programs. These are designed for um, two years or less. Um, you, get, you get you the hands-on experience, um, and as soon as you graduate, you get right into the workforce. A lot of our degree programs are going to be um, one year um, based. Um, so it takes you one year, you're done. Our fastest degree program um, that we do have is actually a four-month degree. It's our precision and machinery uh, program that we do offer. Um, so the, in these, we offer associates in um, applied science, certificate proficiency, uh, specialization in job preparation and advancement. So our third option is going to be our um, uh, accelerated um, job accelerated program. These are designed for, um, say, no degree required. Um, uh, most of these programs are six to eight weeks. Um, you get the hands-on training, you get right into the workforce. So our, our two most popular is going to be our Boeing program. Um, and our uh, CDL truck drivers. So the Boeing program, basically it is a six to eight week fast paced, two weeks you get um, training, hands-on training, and then you take a test off of what you learn. In the event that you do not uh, complete the program or you are removed from the program for any reason, um, you cannot apply uh, for the program again for, uh, I believe it's three years. Um, most of our programs that we do offer on the Job Accelerator program, we they are free, and if they're not free, um, if they cost, we do have funding um, that, that helps at some of that cost. You can see all our programs and offers that we do have at St. Louis Community College at um, stlcc.edu slash programs, and it will give you a, a list of all the programs that we do offer. We offer um, a campus life. We have over 80 degree programs. The good thing about St. Louis Community College is we are multiple campuses, but we are one college. Um, so once you enroll in St. Louis Community College, you have all rights and privileges to attend um, any, any club student organization um, that we do offer among all of our uh, campus locations. And if you do not see a program that you, an organization that you do um, identify with, it is very easy for you to start your own program. Uh, we do offer um, study abroad um, at uh, St. Louis Community College. Uh, for more information on that, you can contact the Campus Life Department and, and they will be able to assist you with that. Um, we do offer sports. Uh, we have uh, men's and women's basketball, uh, men's and women's soccer, baseball, volleyball, and softball. Um, they, well, if you see at the bottom of the screen where it shows the campus where um, those sports are located at, that just means that's where your games and practice are going to always be at. That does not mean you have to attend that particular campus um, to uh, be a part of the team. And so uh, we do always ask that when you are picking your classes, and if you're picking classes from one campus and you're playing sports at Sports Park, that you allow yourself enough time to commute um, and um, get to practice on time. At STLCC, we are always here, um, available to chat with you. Um, these are the uh, departments that are always available. We are all open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And on Fridays, we're open from 9 to 4. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns uh, about opportunities at St. Louis Community College, um, I do uh, strongly suggest that you uh, reach out and chat and uh, speak with uh, the representative of these various departments. 
And uh, we do actually have a, a virtual preview day coming up on Saturday uh, from 10 to 1. Uh, where you will be able to get more um, if you wanted more information about the programs or offerings that we do offer at St. Louis Community College. We will have those. Um, it is easy to sign up. Um, it's going to be 100% virtual. And if you can't make the one on April 10th, we would love to see you um, at the one on May 11th. Um, and that is the conclusion of my uh, presentation. Thank you very much, St. Louis Community College. Um, now we're going to move into the second half of our presentations with uh, Center College. Perfect. I'll go ahead and get started. My name is Lauren Samuelson, and I'm an assistant director of admission at Center College, and I work directly with Missouri students. So very excited to get to work with you all and meet you today. Um, and so just a little bit about Center. Center is a small liberal arts college in the center of Kentucky, which is how we got our name. Um, we're located in Danville, Kentucky, which is about five hours from St. Louis and a bit further from Kansas City. And then in the middle, you can add that up. Um, but we have about 1,400 students on our our campus and 98% of our students live on campus. So we're very much a residential college, a residential community. Um, you'll spend a lot of time getting to know the people around you and spending time on campus. So um, when we think about our campus makeup, it is 50-50 for in-state and out-of-state. So I was an out-of-state student coming to center and absolutely loved it. And we have people coming from all over the country and all over the world. Um, we are about 23% students of color um, and diversity and inclusion is something that we're very passionate about and growing and advocating for on campus. Um, and our diversity and inclusion office has grown to double in size in the past five years. So we're very excited about that and the different programming they're adding to campus. Um, and our students are very involved. And so center, is a small school, but there's so much to do and so much to get involved in. This picture of downtown is just located right off campus, um, and there's different coffee shops and um, little bakeries, places to get lunch, dinner, all those things. Thinking about academics, I know I've said liberal arts, and if you're not super familiar with the liberal arts, it means that you get a little bit of everything in your academic experience. So students do have the first two years to pick a major, but then you'll also have general education requirements where you take classes from like a bunch of different topics. So I was a history major at Center, but I also took classes like chemistry and um, psychology um, ethics. I took sociology courses, art history, um, and those really added to my academic experience and really helped me figure out what I wanted my career path to be, what I wanted to do for graduate school, um, and I really enjoyed that. So our classes are a lot smaller. We have a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which means you really get to know your faculty well, and classes really never get bigger than 30. The average is around 18, so you can see some of our classes that happen outside, which is really fun too. And just jumping in a little bit with our academic programs here, this is a list of our majors and minors. We are a little bit more broad with our majors and minors being a liberal arts institution, um, but you can really specialize within these majors and programs too. Our largest majors on campus are economics and finance, biology, um, math has grown a lot, and also environmental studies, and we are adding a full business program starting this fall, which we're very excited about. We also have several pre-professional programs that you'll see over on the right, and um, we do send about two-thirds of our students on to graduate school at some point, so pre-law, pre-MBA, pre-med, those are all very big programs for us. We do have a 96% acceptance rate for law school and an 84% acceptance rate for med school, and um, so we're sending a lot of students into those fields. We also have degree partnerships for engineering, nursing, and teaching, and one of the biggest ones is our engineering partnership with WashU and St. Louis as well. For campus life, um, our students are very involved. Um, when you live on campus, your life really does take place there, so it's hard not, not to be involved. Um, but there's over 2,000 campus events throughout the year. Um, there's always something to go and get involved with. There's over 100 clubs on campus. Those could be service-related, religious life, um, intramurals, athletics. Um, I was in a club that just went to the Humane Society to play with puppies during the year. Um, and so there's so many things to go and get involved with. Um, my favorite event of the fall all is an event that we have that's called Expo, where as a first year student, you can go and sign up for all the clubs that we have on campus. And it really helps you as you're figuring out what you want to get involved with, who you want to be in college. And for me, it helped me find out about a lot of clubs that I wouldn't have known about otherwise coming to college. And these are just a few other things that our students get involved with. So um, you can see in the middle, that is a picture of our lacrosse field. We are division three for athletics. So that means there's no additional athletic scholarships for our athletes. And um, however, they do get 
great packages when it comes to scholarship and financial aid. Um, but we do have about 42% of students that are athletes. So it's a big part of our campus. Um, and we are quite competitive in our conference. Um, but what's nice about being a D3 athlete, I was a D3 athlete myself on the swim team at center, is that you get to do everything on campus. You can be in Greek life, you can study abroad, do internships, research, um, and really be a part of so many different things. You're not just an athlete, which is a nice part of the D3 experience as well. We also are known for the arts. So on the left, you can see some of our performing arts. We have a full performing arts center on campus that brings in Broadway shows, plays, events. And on the right, you can see our visual arts center, um, which we call the JVAC. And we are known for having glass blowing on campus, which is pretty neat. We're also known in the country for study abroad. About 85% of our students do study abroad and about 30% go more than once. Um, and we guarantee that during your center experience, you'll get to do research or an internship, study abroad and graduate within four years. Our semester long study abroad programs are even included with tuition. I went to France um, and the only thing I had to buy was my flight to get there, which is pretty amazing. Um, and just to wrap up, this is a kind of, um, the picture of our scholarships at center. We have general merit scholarships that we consider for you, you for when you apply. We have special scholarships for performing arts, language, diversity and service. And then we also have three different premier scholarship programs that are actually full cost and full tuition plus. So we bring in 30 students a year with a full cost or full tuition scholarship for students that are above and beyond academically, first generation college students and for students that wanna change the world. So if you have more questions about that, definitely be in touch. Again, I'd also recommend following us on social media at Admission Center. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Um, and that's where we'll have a lot of our updates on what's coming up. So thank you guys so much. Thank you very much, Center. Um, as we move on to our next presenter, just a reminder to anybody who recently joined us, uh, please do feel free to ask questions to any of the panelists utilizing the Q&A. But up next is DePaul University. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Um, the train just went by in the background, so apologies if you hear that. I'm going to go ahead and get uh, start sharing my presentation. All right, so my name is Sarah Fink. I am the admission counselor from DePaul University that works with students from Missouri. So I am so excited to be with you all tonight. Um, I was a student at DePaul. I'm actually what's considered a double demon. I did both my undergrad and my graduate degree at DePaul. And I'm also from Missouri originally. Um, I went to Eureka High School in St. Louis. So super excited to be able to, to talk with you all about DePaul. Um, I always love to start out with this gorgeous picture of our campus. I think it does a great job of not only showing, you know, how, how beautiful our campus is in the fall, you can see kind of the, the fall leaves just there in the foreground, um, but also just where we are located in Chicago. Um, we actually are a dual campus university, which means that we have a campus here in Lincoln Park, which is a northern neighborhood of Chicago, about 15 minutes north of downtown. And then we also have a campus in the downtown loop area where all those high rise buildings are in the back. And this map does a little better job of showing exactly where we are in Chicago. And this is actually a pretty zoomed in look at the city. So um, these campuses are actually only about 15 minutes apart via the train. You can see the little graphic we have there. Um, that's how students will get back and forth between our campuses, as well as how they are um, able to get around Chicago in general. Every student at DePaul gets a U-Pass, which gets you unlimited access to the Chicago trains and buses. So while you're a student, we really do consider to Chicago to be um, our whole campus. So you're really not limited to just Lincoln Park or the Loop. Um, you're able to really get all around Chicago with that U Pass. Um, and we do have our campuses split up by different majors. If you're interested in our areas of the liberal arts, education, theater, music, or the health sciences, um, you'll be spending most of your time in Lincoln Park. If you're interested in areas like business, communications, or computing and digital media, those are going to be located in our Loop campus. And this is just a graphic to show you a little bit more about the university. Um, so overall, we have a little over 22,000 total students. Of those, about 15,000 or so are undergraduate students, which actually makes us the largest Catholic university in the nation. Um, about 30% of our students identify as Catholic. And then after that, uh, we do have over 30 different religions represented on campus, including students who don't practice um, and come from no faith background. So um, again, definitely don't have to be Catholic to, to attend a poll where we really get our, our Catholic mission comes from why we were founded um, specifically in Chicago, which uh, we were named after St. Vincent de Paul, the patron saint of charity. So those values of community service, of 
accessibility to a college education um, and to inclusivity are really important to, um, to who we are as an institution. We were actually one of the first universities um, in Illinois to admit women and people of color. And we were the first university in Illinois for a woman to graduate with a college degree. So again, just those, all those values coming together really um, shape our identity as an institution. Um, you can study from a variety of different things at DePaul. I have listed here our top five most popular majors. Those include film and television, the health sciences, accounting, psychology, and computer science. Um, I mentioned all of our colleges just a minute ago, but you can see a full list on our website of all of our different majors. Um, we are a liberal arts university. So as people have mentioned previously, um, liberal arts education really important to us. It really just means that we're preparing you for any kind of career field you wanna go into. So in addition to taking classes within your major, you're also gonna be exposed to classes in areas like arts and literature, philosophy, history, science, um, and a fancy category called social, cultural, and behavioral inquiry. Um, really all of these fun classes are a way for you to get outside of your major, maybe get a double major, Major or a minor in another area and really just expand your horizons and prepare you for, again, whatever career you want to go into once you graduate. Um, another huge selling point about DePaul is, again, our Chicago location, which really lends itself well to getting jobs and internships, both while you're a student and once you graduate. Um, last year, our Career Center posted over 15,000 internships for our students. So if you remember just a second ago, I mentioned we have a little over 15,000 students. So it equals about one internship per student um, if they're pursuing that that if they're pursuing them that year. Um, about 65% of our students will graduate having completed at least one internship. And it is a requirement at DePaul that you either complete an internship, study abroad, or do a community-based service learning course. So those values of experiential learning are also really important to us. We wanna make sure you're getting outside of the classroom, really taking advantage of being in Chicago. Um, Finally, I will talk a little bit about the application process. Um, DePaul is on the Common App, and that is the only application we have. So you'll just make your free Common App account, and the, it is free to send your application to DePaul as well. Um, the only thing that we require is your official high school transcript, and then what's called a Common App school report. The school report is a document filled out by your school counselor, so it's nothing you need to worry about. Um, it's something your school counselor will send along with the transcript, giving, giving us a recommendation of you as an applicant. And we also are test optional. Um, we actually have been test optional since 2012. So we are really used to reviewing students' applications both with and without test scores. Um, you can feel free to submit them if you would like, but this past year, over 70% of our applicants and admitted students chose to not submit a test score. So you are still considered for full admission and scholarships without them. Um, I highly recommend applying by November 15th, our early action deadline, if you can. Um, that is a good way to get full consideration for scholarships, um, as well as just get a decision early. So that's all I've got. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. I look forward to connecting with you all in the future. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, and now we're going to move on to our final presenter, Butler University. All right. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you virtually, I guess. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Um, and get going. So my name is Ann Denz. Um, I am an admission counselor at Butler University. Um, I have parts of Missouri, and then I also um, share the territory with my coworker, Chris Potts. So um, you would have one of us during your college search process. Um, I will go ahead and just kind of jump right in. Um, I, we have about five, a un, little under 5,000 undergraduate students um, at Butler University. So we are kind of a lower end of a medium sized school and we are located um, just about 10 minutes from the downtown Indianapolis area. Um, so we do have access to that larger city, um, even though we do are have a little bit more of a residential campus. Um, we have an average class size of about 22. So we like to keep things a little bit smaller, more personalized for that academic setting. Um, and then we have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio. So not only are you gonna get to know your peers really well, um, and it's gonna be a very collaborative environment, but you're also going to get to know your professors um, really well on top of that. They will provide office hours throughout the semester so that they make sure that you get the support that you need both in and out of the classroom setting. 
like many of the other institutions that have already gone, um, we are a liberal arts focused institution. So we like to give you that well-rounded experience. Um, I We do offer about six different colleges um, and over 65 different majors. So I just kind of did a basic breakdown here to give you a feel for what colleges we have to offer. Um, so we have College of Communication, which is about kind of sports media, strategic communication. We have really updated state-of-the-art studios. Um, we do have the College of Education as well. Um, they've had a really high placement rate, so our students see a lot of success after graduation. You can go into elementary ed, middle secondary education, or even a youth and community development program, um, which is more focused on still working with young people, but not necessarily um, within the classroom setting. And then College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which has all those natural sciences, social sciences, humanities, really interdisciplinary. Um, and because we are mostly undergraduate focused institution, we have some really cool research opportunities for our students on campus, whether that's working with a professor or maybe conducting their own research as well. Our College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences has a six year direct admit pharmacy program. So a bit of a fast track there. Um, and then it's really anything healthcare related. So a lot of students that fall under this major um, or under this college will go into medical school, physician's assistant, um, master's program, maybe veterinary, dental, physical therapy, anything that's kind of that next level healthcare system. And then Jordan College of the Arts, we have a nationally ranked ballet program, music, theater, arts plus design. So that's anything fine arts related. Um, we do allow students to still participate in non-major dance classes, any of the music ensembles, theater productions, even if you're not a major or minor. So you can still keep that in your life. And we do have some um, non-major scholarship opportunities as well for you. Um, and then finally, Lacey School of Business, we require some internships here. We had a new building open up about two years ago. Um, so really updated facilities there. Um, and then we were able to um, have pair our students with professional career mentors on top of that, which lets them just have a really good guide throughout their four years at Butler and then um, a good resource once they graduate as well. Um, for our next slide, if I go, okay, oops. <laughs> Um, okay, so these are just a couple other more, um, a few pictures to show you kind of what Butler's campus really embodies. So that middle graphic that you see there um, is called our BU Be Well model. So we have eight different dimensions that we're really focusing for individuals to grow in. Um, we want to make sure that obviously academically you are growing, but we want to make sure that we're also building your um, physical, your, your mental health. We're making sure that we're promoting diversity and inclusion um, and really providing that opportunity to foster service opportunities um, and other social opportunities as well. So we want you to be leaving Butler um, as a really well-developed entire individual. We do have about 130 student organizations. That's anywhere from student body government to Greek life to intramural and club sport options. We have um, about 20 division one athletic teams. We have about 200 programs in 60 different countries for study abroad opportunities as well. Um, so really just a wide range for students to get involved. I'd say about 100% of our student body is involved in at least one activity, if not more than one. Um, for kind of just living on campus, we do require students to live on campus for the first three years. So that really builds a strong community. Um, and we wanna make sure we're giving those students the opportunity to meet and grow with other students as well. Um, so I know that I'm kind of running up on the last minute here. So just to kind of speak a little bit to um, the application process for us as well. Our application opens up August 1st. We accept a Butler specific app or a the common app as well. We have also moved to a test optional policy. So if you're just not happy with your scores or don't want to include those, you will not be penalized. Um, and then we do have a November 1 early action deadline, which is not binding, but gives you maximum consideration for um, scholarship as well as admission. Um, and then we have the opportunity for that regular decision deadline as well. Um, you're automatically considered for academic scholarships and those are renewable for the four years that you would be at Butler. But there are some supplemental scholarships that are due around November 15. So we wanna make sure that you have that opportunity to um, 
apply for those as well. So this is just my contact information. Um, this is also our live mascot on campus, um, Butler Blue the Fourth. We, he has a lot of social media, so I highly recommend checking that out. Um, we are doing visits on campus in person as well. So we would love to see you if you have an opportunity to come visit um, and learn a little bit more about Butler. So thank you so much. Um, and I look forward to seeing if you guys have any questions. Thank you very much, Butler, and thank you to all of our panelists this evening for your great presentations. We do have some time remaining, so attendees, if you have any further questions, please do feel free to send those through the Q&A. Uh, while we're waiting to see what kind of questions come in, maybe we can take a round of questions ourselves. Um, so I would pose the following question to you all, fairly open. What's one thing you did not have time to include in your presentation that you'd like to quickly cover? Maybe that's your favorite event or tradition, a fun fact about your school, or just some other piece of information about your school uh, that you'd like to include. We'll go back in that same order. So we'll start with uh, Loyola. Thank you. Um, so I, some of you might watch basketball. And if you have, we did, had a decent run this year. It wasn't as good as 2018. I'm a little bitter about it. It's okay. Um, but Loyola is a division one school for NCAA athletics. Um, and so that's always a really fun, you know, activity to watch. They're free games on campus. So if you enjoy watching basketball, volleyball, track and field, soccer, whatever, you know, your, your favorite sport is, you probably have it. Um, and like Sarah mentioned in her presentation about DePaul, um, Loyola also has the university pass that can get you access to the CTA. So thank you for reminding me, Sarah. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, Augustana? Um, a few years ago, we were ranked by um, a research engine called, uh, um, uh, on the internet called Thrill List. We were ranked in the top 25 most beautiful campuses in America, uh, something we take great pride with here at Augustana as far as showing you um, a wonderful environment to be in. So yes, I wish I would have added that uh, during my six minutes. Great, thank you. Uh, St. Louis Community College. Um, yes, so um, forgot to mention um, that we do offer A plus at St. Louis Community College. So for um, those high school um, students that are taking A plus, um, if you graduate um, and you meet those requirements and you have the A plus seal on your transcript, you can actually come get a free degree um, as long as you are uh, meeting um, the GPA requirements while you're still in um, in college. Um, the entire time you're still in college, it'll be free for you. So you get a free degree. And then we do have um, um, partners, um, some of our college partners that do offer scholarships. And so um, and they do come to San Community College. And so we have had a few students actually go start with us getting their um, degree for free and then going on to get their bachelor's degree uh, for free. So um, that is a good thing that we do offer as well. Great, thank you. Uh, Center College. Um, I know I talked about study abroad, but we also have a study away program as well. So you, we have a semester program in Washington, DC, where you can intern on Capitol Hill or with different programs there. Um, and we're adding a new program in New York City for a full semester that's focused on um, theater and sociology of um, immigration and the people's past and present of New York City. So those are some new programs for us too. Hey, thank you. DePaul? Well, I guess I won't mention athletics because DePaul did not make it to that far in the, uh, they did not even make it to March Madness this year. It's fine. Uh, but our women's basketball team is actually really amazing. They typically win the Big East tournament each year. So women's basketball represent. Um, but I would also just add that um, uh, DePaul does have about, about a third of our students are first generation college students. So they're the first in their families to go to college. Um, so we have a really excellent mentorship program for our first gen students um, where you're paired with other first gen upperclassmen um, to really show you the ropes once you get to DePaul. So again, just going back to those values of accessibility of a college education, we wanna make sure that when you get here, you have the tools to graduate on time as well. Thank you. Uh, Butler? Awesome. Mine's a little bit less academic or focused on kind of that side of it. But um, one of my favorite traditions that we have on campus is during homecoming week. Um, as I mentioned, we do have a live mascot on campus named Butler Blue the Fourth. And during that homecoming week, we usually will have a bulldog pageant. And so we have like 80 bulldogs roaming around campus dressed up in all sorts of fun little activities and, and gear. And they have an actual like beauty show for them. So it's funny. Um, it's enjoyable. If you like dogs, it's a really fun kind of tradition to have on campus. So um, I really enjoy that as well. 
Great, thank you. Um, and thank you again to all of our panelists for your overviews of your institutions and your additional insight. Um, and also certainly we wanna thank all of our attendees for joining us this evening. Uh, we do have just a few quick housekeeping items before we end this session. Uh, the first is that once you close this window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask that you take a minute complete. And again, there are two other blocks of sessions this evening. So please do feel free to sign up for those if you haven't already done so. And about one week from today, a recording of the session will be available on that same registration website. But thank you again to everybody and to all of our attendees. Good luck in your college search. Have a great evening.